court. As we turn right now to our last segment of the broadcast, um, we're here at the National Conference on Media Reform um, here in Denver, Colorado. Um, last night was the premiere of a film uh, that it talks about how freedom of the press in the United States is eroding under increasing corporate control. Shadows of Liberty had its U.S. premiere here at the National Conference for Media Reform, using individual stories of journalists whose attempts to tell their stories have been muzzled by corporations and the government. The film shows how a corporate-controlled media can silence the truth and pave the way to war. The film is directed by Jean-Philippe Tremblay, who is joining us now in Denver. But first, we're going to go to the trailer of Shadows of Liberty. All we ever get is a veil of distortion and lies and misrepresentations that obscure reality. We have an update on this. Evening, we have a lot of news to tell you about. Giant media corporations decide what is news and what is not news. This is to control people's ideas, is to control their imagination. The news we rely on is in the hands of commercial enterprises. If it didn't appear in the New York Times, Fox News, CNN, it never happened. There are certain events in journalism that you may not cover. There were incidences of physical abuse. Ah! CBS decided this is not a story we're going to fight for. All of a sudden, the plane exploded. And one guy goes, oh, you think it's a missile? It was a complete act of deceit. Well, we basically supported the Bush policy. When that many people die, you owe it to them to find out what really happened. Spying. Censorship. Militarism. Secrets. Corruption. Power. Lies. Profit. 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 This is the mother of all scandals. Corporations are making profit off the killing. Cannot go against the White House and survive. There has never been a conspiracy. Wars really are started by the mainstream media. That was the trailer for Shadows of Liberty. The film's director, Jean-Philippe Tremblay, joins us now in Denver. He's a London-based filmmaker, originally from Quebec. Uh, his past films include Journey and Rock Bottom Phil. But this is his first feature documentary. Welcome to Democracy Now! Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, why did you decide to do this film? Uh, uh, we decided to do this film uh, with Doc Factory and the Bertha Foundation because we're dedicated to independent media. Uh, the goal was really to make films that change the world, and it became obvious to us that the media is one of the most, if not the most important subject uh, that we need to deal with today. Um, and that's why we made the film. I, I mean, really, we, w we wanted to honor uh, journalists, uh, not only in the States, but from around the world, that are dedicating their lives to bring us truths that, that we need to hear uh, about power, about governments, so that citizens can make uh, the right choices uh, for, for their lives, for their families, and uh, hold power accountable. So uh, that's why we made the film. Jean-Philippe, the examples in your film are extremely powerful, and that's what we're going to turn to uh, right now. We're going to turn to a clip of the film. Um, and this is a clip that involves um, uh, Roberta Baskin. Um, she is a reporter for CBS. Um, the first story in the film is about this reporter, CBS chief correspondent, who traveled to Vietnam in 1996 to report on labor abuses at Nike factories. This is a clip of Roberta Baskin describing some of what she found. One of the things that really shocked me was to discover that the word Nike had become a verb. The word Nike meant to abuse your employees. There were incidences of physical abuse. Women who had their mouths taped shut for talking on the line. Fifteen women were systematically hit with the top part of a Nike shoe around the face and the neck. It was this disparity between seeing the corporate image that the company sells and the reality in these factories. Just do it. 
or else. The report sparked protests and boycotts across the country as Nike rushed to deny the allegations. CBS asked Roberta Baskin to do a follow-up report. The film explains what happened next. As Baskin was putting together the updated news report on Nike's labor practices, she received unexpected news from inside CBS. I got a call from my executive producer who said the story is not going to air. It's been taken off schedule. There's some sort of deal being made between Nike and CBS News for the upcoming Winter Olympics. The air went out of my soul. CBS News was paying an enormous amount of money for the rights. And so by definition, they would be seeking out commercial sponsors who would pour a lots of money into it so that they could recoup the millions that they were paying for the rights of the Olympics. The 18th Olympic Winter Games on CBS. As CBS revealed their Olympic coverage, the deal between Nike and CBS was plain to see. Correspondent after correspondent are wearing these Nike jackets on the air with a little CBS something or other. You really couldn't read it in a big swoosh on the shoulder. That was the deal. Nike had convinced CBS News to turn its correspondence into billboards. It was heartbreaking. The CBS News correspondents were furious. They had to wear the Nike parkers whenever they appeared on air. It's just not done. Baskin wrote a memo requesting CBS management to take the Nike logo off the correspondence. CBS had crossed this incredible line. How do you trust serious stories when you're seeing the reporter wearing a bunch of logos? Immediately, the president of CBS News responded, saying this was a breach of professional etiquette. It meant that I should shut up. How dare I raise a question about the integrity of CBS News? That was Roberta Baskin from the film Shadows of Liberty. You also heard former CBS News producer Brian Healy in that clip. Jean-Philippe Tremblay, why did you choose to open the film with this story? Uh, well, Roberta Baskin is just uh, an example of uh, an amazing uh, journalist. She's uh, uh, one of the most awarded female journalists uh, here in the United States. She's won something like over 75 journalistic awards, uh, and uh, the report the reporting that she does is always uh, trying to uh, tell us what's happening with power. Here we see an example with uh, the Nike Corporation, and because she's reporting on the Nike Corporation, she's stopped by the very power that she's working for, CBS News, because uh, they have made a deal with Nike Corporation. Well, Jean-Philippe Tremblay, we will um, link to Shadows of Liberty at our website and uh, let people know where else it will be premiering uh, in other parts of the world and in this country. As we wrap up our broadcast today. We are very excited to be broadcasting from the National Conference for Media Reform. Uh, Jean-Philippe Tremblay is a London-based filmmaker originally from Quebec. Well, starting at noon Eastern time today, you can watch a live stream of this conference on your, our website, democracynow.org. Thanks so much for watching this report from Democracy Now!, your daily independent global news hour. We don't accept advertising or corporate funding, but rather rely on donations from viewers like you. Please make your contribution by visiting democracynow.org. We need your support today to keep bringing you this hard-hitting, in-depth reporting.